Man, don't be out here playing with God, man. Yesterday I was playing with fire. My stupid ass was playing with fire. I've always wondered what you were saying on, on you know, when you were talking about our lifestyle, you said that, that, that. Yeah, that wasn't <laughs> me on that part. It was the. That was <laughs> so, yeah, but I can tell you what he say. He's like, uh, did a lot of shit just to live this here lifestyle. Nigga living the nigga living the nigga living and living like a beginning, but I don't know what. I don't know I got it, I don't I got I got I got it. And I'm living and living like a beginning, I don't know. In a shocking turn of events, Rich Homie Kwan's brother, Andre Munford, has taken to social media, unleashing a storm of allegations against Kwan's baby mama, Amber Williams. This incident which unfolded in the early hours of September 5th, raises numerous questions about the circumstances surrounding Kwan's unexpected state and the timeline that led up to it. Let's dive into this tumultuous situation that has fans on the edge of their seats. 285, Old National to the east side, to endless flights from instant oatmeal and cereal to continental breakfast. No, not, and from continental breakfast to personal chefs, you know what I'm saying? Like we went, we went from apartments, you know, sometimes no hot water, man. Like we, we, we didn't stop. I love you, man. The story began on that fateful morning when Andre Munford woke up around 3 a.m. and discovered rich homie Kwan asleep on the kitchen floor. In an astonishing revelation, Andre shared that Quan had food in his mouth and seemed to be alive at that moment. This detail is pivotal, as it suggests that Quan was indeed responsive just hours before the later, tragic events unfolded. Rich homie Quan's brother found him asleep on the kitchen floor with food in his mouth and then moved him to the sofa at 3 a.m., where Quan's girlfriend found him in the morning at 6.45 a.m. and left him there. You see your brother on the floor, with a piece of chicken hanging out of his mouth. Out of it. And you just gonna drag him to the couch? Yeah, that's wild. And I get it. Some people that be around people that do. Amber Williams, Quan's girlfriend, painted a different picture when she reported the events to authorities. She claimed that she woke up at 6.45 a.m. to take their children to school. According to her account, she saw Quan on the couch covered him with a blanket, and went back to bed. However, by 11 a.m., she returned to find Quan still on the couch. But this time, his body was cold and he wasn't breathing. They didn't understand, like, they could be out of it sometimes, just that and there and all that. But still, though, on the floor, food hanging out his mouth, like, that's just automatically, like, something ain't right. An incident report posted Monday by investigators revealed new details from the morning Rich Homie Quan was found unresponsive. New details, a lot more stuff going to start coming out. A very weird situation, right? An officer who responded to the home spoke with Lamar's girlfriend and brother. Around 3 a.m., Lamar's brother said he found a rapper asleep on the floor near the kitchen counter. These conflicting accounts have left many fans scratching their heads. If Quan was alive at 3 a.m., what transpired between that time and the grim discovery made by Amber? Why didn't anyone check on him sooner? Some fans speculate that perhaps he had already succumbed by the time Amber saw him covered up. This leads to the critical question. Did Amber notice any signs that he was in distress? He advised me that it was very unusual because he had food in his mouth. Exactly. He lifted him up and put him on the sofa. The officer wrote in the report. Lamar's girlfriend says she woke up around 6.45 a.m. to get the kids ready for school and noticed that he wasn't in the bedroom. She spotted him asleep on the couch and left to drop the kids off at school. When she returned home, she saw the rapper was still asleep and she went back to bed. I can't finish reading it because it's blocking it. But it said the police, she woke up around 11 a.m. to check and observe that his body was cold. And you can finish reading that. So that's wild, man. A lot of stuff, just like the, the Sonya case after stuff done happened, more and more stuff start to unfold and get to the nitty gritty. So y'all already know, man, I'm gonna keep you updated. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts, follow for more. The drama doesn't stop there. Following the incident, a slew of women began coming forward, claiming they had relationships with Quan. 
Social media was flooded with posts from these women, some even sharing sentimental messages. One woman shared a heartfelt message on Instagram, reminiscing about their moments together, while another TikTok user uploaded a video showcasing their intimate moments. This sudden influx of women raises eyebrows about the dynamics of Quan's personal life. I'm trying to get in like performance mode. And the cane scrape from the bottom to the top of my lifestyle. Nigga living, living like beginning, then no. I don't know what he said. <laughs> But he said, that, that actually words. That yeah, actually words. And I know I'm like, this is just like, I don't know, like a brain fart. I need a little more Casamigo. Yeah, okay. Right. We'll come back to this. <laughs> With so many voices emerging, it feels like a whirlwind of stories, each adding a new layer to the narrative. Some women described how they felt cherished during their time with Quan, while others expressed sorrow over their shared experiences now being public. As the drama unfolds, Fans are left wondering how these revelations will impact Amber and Quan's legacy. You ready to say sorry now? Sorry for what? Sorry for how you was talking to me. I ain't sorry for shit. Now, I will apologize about my delivery and how I came across to you with my approach. But I meant all that shit I said, though. Yeah, find you somebody else to fucking play with. Don't keep fucking coming over here playing. Amber's reaction to this wave of revelations has been mixed. Some commenters speculated whether she was aware of Quan's infidelities before his passing. One user remarked, He chose those women. It's on him. This sentiment resonates with many fans who are scrutinizing the complexity of their relationship. It's so crazy because y'all gonna see a total difference in it, nigga. What? Say we don't let God handle it. We don't let God handle it. Hey, hey, hey now. I'm not I'm not gonna do too much. I'm not gonna do too much, Kyle. We are gonna let God handle it. We are gonna let God handle it. Cause I wouldn't dare play myself off the streets. I have no definitely whole, seen God work. I've seen God work and I'm watching him work. I can watch I can look at a bitch's skin and tell God work. Oops. You stupid mother. And my nipple came out. <laughs> I can look at a bitch skin and tell God is real. You see how God worked? That's why your nipple came out. He made my nipple come out. <laughs> Listen, God ain't gonna do his bit one. I just really wish the nigga was here, but... You know, he'll always give up. The narrative takes a darker turn when considering the speculation surrounding Quan's past struggles with addiction. Many have pointed to his previous battles with substance abuse, questioning if his tragic end was merely a result of those struggles. Given the chaotic circumstances of that night, the potential for an overdose cannot be dismissed lightly. This leads fans to ponder whether Quan had adequate support systems in place or if the pressures of fame exacerbated his vulnerabilities. I can make smoke come out of one nostril and I can make come out of both. So it's Bitch, yes, for real. Is that man coming out? Yes, I should. Hey, this is pretty. I came down when I got into it. Be shown back on. I thought I was the best for. Yep. Oh, I'm not fine. I went to jail for a cop. He said, we do want y'all to have a better relationship. I'm going to have an awesome relationship when that's how did you report come back? I went to jail and got transported out here. Yeah, like, As stories surface about his attempts to seek help and the challenges he faced, the conversation shifts from mere blame to understanding the mental health aspects intertwined with his life. However, there are also theories suggesting that foul play could be involved. With all the turmoil surrounding Young Thug's ongoing legal issues, some fans have been connecting the dots, wondering if Quan's demise could somehow be linked to the larger criminal framework in which he was once involved. The whispers about potential drugs being laced or bad decisions made in desperate moments add another layer of complexity to the tragic story. It's kind of like a blur to me only because 
it was happening so fast and like, man, I got a catalog and you got to think, I only had like a three year run and like the catalog I do in shows, man, I'm putting on an hour and a half show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like that time for me, it was, it was different. It was life changing. You feel me? Especially coming from jail. Then two years later, I'm a millionaire and money got in my head fast too. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? It slowed me down. You know what I mean? But I feel like God don't make mistakes. I'm still here 10 years later. Beyond the immediate drama, the fallout from this incident highlights a troubling trend in the world of hip hop. The culture surrounding these artists often romanticizes a lifestyle filled with excess, leading to dire consequences. Quan's story serves as a somber reminder of the price that many pay for fame and fortune. It's a stark contrast to the glamorous image often portrayed in music videos and social media posts. You know what I mean? So, and that was, uh, I saw him then, and, you know, that shit got squashed. Or, well, like, because there ain't never been no real tension between me and him. Mm. It was more about the niggas around him making it and the niggas around me making it more, more than what it was, because, like, we would still see each other head nod, you know what I'm saying, keep it moving, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Really been no real attention, but egos played a big part in that shit. Moreover, the public's fascination with celebrity drama often overshadows the more profound issues at play. Fans become embroiled in the scandal, while the artist's struggles are reduced to gossip fodder. How long before did you get so-called out of custody before you made it to the stage? How long were you think you were out? I like 45. Ow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you take a bath in the jail right fast so I can just. The fact that multiple women have come forward since Quan's passing speaks to a deeper cultural narrative about relationships in the entertainment industry. Are these relationships built on genuine connection, or are they merely transient interactions fueled by fame and notoriety? Go ahead and put on clothes. I don't need to try to rent a home, get enough shower, and then I just let me take a bath here. I'm like, man, so you went then really the from the cage to the stage. Yeah, my mom like, I'm like, bring the clothes to the jail. Just gonna take a bath in the jail and like do this. She like, nah, no, let's go. Andre Munford's vocal accusations against Amber Williams add yet another layer to this complicated story. He has not only questioned her account of events, but has also suggested that she may have manipulated the narrative for her benefit. Who are you? Jeff. <laughs> Young fuck? Yeah. And Jeff, young thug, who do you have beside you? Gunna. Hello, Gunna. What's up? And also, I was wondering. I'm right here, I'm leaving the place. Where you at? And I was wondering, oh, what is young thug? What is young thug doing right now? Am I gonna see you? Uh, he working. This public airing of grievances indicates a fractured family dynamic that could further complicate matters in the future. How will these revelations affect their children? The implications extend beyond the individuals involved and into the lives of the innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire. And have you seen a lot of Young Thug working? Yes. And here is Young Thug on the phone and Young Thug... Oh, he, did he post, this was be gonna? <laughs> we, uh, that was for kind of, actually, Young Thug, we have right here, lastly, we know on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I am a... Gangsta. This situation is a classic example of how personal tragedies can spiral into public spectacles. With both Amber and Andre sharing their narratives, the media has seized the opportunity to sensationalize every detail. The public discourse around this incident highlights the challenges that families face in dealing with loss while simultaneously grappling with public scrutiny. Young Thug told me something before, like, it was so crazy, uh, free young thug, free thug. He was telling me like, we don't come from the same city, but we coming from the same place, the same environment. It's like, in this game, you ain't gonna even like to hear this, but I can tell you got a pure heart. I can see how you moving with your people, but in this game, to get where you going, you have to be fake. You almost mm. have to be fake sometimes. Yeah. As the story continues to unfold, fans and followers of Rich Homie Kwan are left with more questions than answers. What truly happened in those critical hours between 3 a.m. and 11 a.m.? Was there foul play involved, or was it simply a tragic culmination of past struggles? The complex web of relationships, accusations, and public speculation paints a stark picture of the challenges faced by artists navigating their personal lives amidst the glare of the spotlight. 
You know what I'm saying? You got to play the part and mm -hmm. you get know what I'm saying? Just huh, smile the whole time in your head. This ain't even really where I want to be. This one was this what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just had to play the part. So I just I fed off there. Shout out to Thug Free Thug again and yeah. That's some real advice right there. That's some real advice. There's gonna be days where you're not in the mood, but you have to smile through it and act like you're Most happy. You gotta keep that pushing no matter what. Sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do. While this incident has provided ample gossip and speculation. It also serves as a reminder of the very real consequences of the lifestyle that many in the hip-hop community lead. As fans continue to discuss and dissect every detail, the most pressing question remains. How can we as a society support those grappling with similar issues while also holding individuals accountable for their choices? Currently in a relationship or are you single? I'm in a relationship. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. So, with the uh, kids, do you feel like you want any girls or no? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like, I like parenthood, though. Mm -hmm. then, what would you just say? As always, Buzz Voices is here to keep you updated on all the latest gossip and breaking news in the world of hip-hop. If you want to stay informed and engaged, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And tell us, what do you think about the unfolding drama? Do you believe Amber was truthful about her account? Or is there more to this story? Share your thoughts in the comments below.